Frontier Airlines has been ejected from the Spirit acquisition cockpit, and JetBlue is officially taking command. Just a day after Spirit pulled the plug on plans for the two discount airlines to merge, JetBlue announced its bid to buy Spirit for $3.8 billion has been accepted. Let me, let me just keep these up. Spirit is up 4.5%. Frontier, which is out, is up 19%. JetBlue down 1.3%. But I am checking the market caps at the moment. JetBlue's market cap is now smaller than Spirit's, just by a tiny bit. JetBlue's is 2.6 billion market cap, and Spirit's is 2.7 billion. It's just Kind of interesting. All right, if regulators do approve the deal, the merger will create the fifth largest airline in the U.S. But as Americans face high flight prices and scorching travel demand, some experts are worried that merging a discount airline with a higher priced one could increase fares across the industry. Joining me now in a Fox Business exclusive to discuss the entire travel sector and the increased demand to get out of Dodge and take a vacation is the CEO of Travel and Leisure, Michael Brown. Michael, the airlines are front and center in this wild demand for tickets, which at least right now are very expensive, although the latest CPI, the Consumer Inflation Report, showed airfares in June dipped about 2 percent month over month. But how could this merger affect airfares and flight availability, either to the upside or downside? Well, any change in the in the airline space is obviously going to affect how how people travel, and people are very sensitive to overall pricing today. The great thing that we're seeing, though, is people are fully committed to getting on vacation. Uh, we at Travel and Leisure are seeing the same demand that we saw in 2019 for the remainder of the year. Um, are they changing their behavior a little bit? Yes. Our drive to destinations are doing a little bit better. 79% of our arrivals are to drive to. Wow. But the overall standpoint of how leisure travel is holding up is we're at 2019 levels. And actually, with length of stay extending by about 8 percent, room nights are up from 2019. Room nights, room nights are up. And, and you also had second quarterly revenue, second quarterly record revenue for volume per guest. So people are continuing to just open up that wallet, at least for travel. That's absolutely correct. We had, for the last two quarters, uh, record volume per guest, which means every consumer that visits our resorts and purchases more is spending more than they ever have. Hmm. And that's been a consistent trend that we've seen throughout the year. And despite the news that's out there of all the crosswinds in the consumer space, it seems to be more focused on retail. The services, the goods, uh, sorry, the services and the experiences is where the consumer is continuing to spend and doesn't seem to be slowing down. Hmm. You just mentioned driving to destinations versus flying. How much do you think that the disaster of Father's Day weekend, Juneteenth, when there were so many flights canceled, and then, of course, you follow up with July 4th, which wasn't much better, how much do you think that that really pushed people to say, you know what, let me just drive, and, and to that end, have the airlines finally wrapped their arms around the problem of labor shortages and matching, uh, I would suppose, capacity to what labor they do have? Well, as someone who travels a lot, I, I can share with you both my drive to and, and flight to experience. Let's just say that I do think if you're going on vacation to enjoy your free time, um, you're going to do what's hassle free and driving, <laughs> given that 95% yeah. of the U.S. population is within 300 miles of our resorts, they are driving more. With that said, Orlando is back to 2019 levels for air traffic. So, even though people are driving a bit more and it's more inconvenient to get through that airport, they still are flying and they're still flying to destinations like Orlando where it's back to 19 levels. Yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And I, and I look and, and I see with what with the earnings that you reported and your business, right. you also have some interesting parts of your business. You've got the vacation ownership segment and then you've got right. the home exchange segment. Where are the hottest destinations for those parts of your business? Well, it, it seems to be consistent that people want to get to the sunshine. If we look at the second half of this year, um, where we have 90 percent of our demand already on the books, the South, the Southwest and Hawaii are the three hottest destinations. And what I would say about that is you say we've just talked a lot about drive to. Mm -hmm. And during COVID, Hawaii was one of those that was a real laggard. But people are willing to get on that four to five hour flight from California 
to go to Hawaii because our occupancies for the remainder of this year are again at or above 2019 levels. Oh, I love me some Maui. I, I can't. I mean, <laughs> it is just heavenly, isn't it? Well, Michael, well, thank you. Well, whether, Go ahead. whether it's Hawaii or a drive to destination in our newest resort in Atlanta, uh, Atlanta, people just want to get away. It's been two long years of a mm. lot of negative news and inconvenience. And that's our, that you're, I'm seeing our property in Atlanta right now. Yeah, that's it. People just want to get away, get away and enjoy some free time. Well, enjoy the time you now have, <laughs> certainly, and it won't be much because the business is rocking, at least at the moment. We do have, uh, as we look at this overall, it's a, it's a very strong market, at least today, up 359 points for the Dow Jones Industrials. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.